So I mentioned this in my 300th video, but I've made some major progress with my um, Duo Region Mod Board, this tiny PCB up here, country switch, whatever. Um, just to reiterate, this is for playing US games on the Japanese consoles or vice versa. And this is a switched version. There is a switchless version for like Turbo Express and PCGT, which I have not done anything with yet. This one probably still would work on those, but again, you need the switch. Um, been working on this for a long time, and I happened to get on PC Engine or uh, PC Engine FX forums a while back, and found that uh, TurboCon and the Steve were releasing a very, very similar kit. And that they weren't having any problems with the tur with the uh, Turbo EverDrive, which is what has kept this kit from coming out for a couple years now. I've been working on it quite a quite a long time. So I emailed him. I said, "Why why do you think your kit's not having any problems when mine is?" And come to find out, they were using a newer Turbo EverDrive. I was still using like a version one one, and they were using a two point one or a two point two or something like that. So I ordered the new one, and it worked fine. So, and it was mostly the uh, the white PC engine. I can tell this is a white PC engine because it has RF output, and the core graphics. You know, anything with this big long ribbon cable in it, right here. I, w I was having a lot of corrupt data or whatever. Couldn't figure it out. Well, it was just the Turbo EverDrive. So now that I know mine works. I went ahead and ordered a couple hundred kits, and this is who I used, PCB Way. Um, they were okay, actually. Uh, the website still could use a little bit of polish, I guess. Um, the products look nice. They panelized it for me, and it is uh, V-scored, which I don't mind. And what I loved about it is it was extremely fast. Uh, I think it was seven days from me, maybe eight days, seven days from me paying to me getting this box from China. Um, uh, let's see, I think I had trouble mostly with communication. Um, just questions I was having, you know, and then their English just not good. So, a very quick service, a little bit of problems with the communication, but as soon as they were here, I'm like, how am I going to test these? And it was something I was, it was in the back of my mind when I sent it off. I wasn't sure how I was going to do it, and I'll have to show you close up, but I basically didn't have a way to do it like I was doing the TG-16. The TG-16 I was actually putting the board down onto some pogo pins that was connected to a console and it worked fine but on this one you know and I knew they were going to be panelized like this so I kept thinking in the back of my head how, how I was going to do it and I ended up making a whole separate board that's basically the same pins and whatnot but it doesn't have the chip on it and I'm going to uh, take a, this and solder pogo pins to it and just do it from the top like that and that way I can just lay it down and bam 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 so that board I had made through OSH Park still pretty fast extremely cheap for what you're getting it was I think I think I only paid like four dollars for three of these tiny little boards Free shipping, you know, and their purple solder mask and uh, the Enig finish. Get you close up to that here in a second, but I had to go back and rework all the holes because my pogo pins are a very, very thin body but a very broad head. That's what I wanted for the TG16 because I was actually putting these pins right into the motherboard of the TG16 and I had I had borrowed some pins from Ketris and they were just they were too thick at the body so drilling the holes out of the motherboard just ruined the trace and it just killed it so it looks like I got a new OSH Park sticker too 
Perfect purple PCBs. No doubt. Okay. So let's get a top down view a little bit closer up. Uh, one of the things I didn't mention was PCB Way did do the assembly as well as the PCB fabrication. I mean, it's just two components the chip and the cap, so no big deal. But they did actually send me back uh, the extra capacitors that they had. And I've already put them in a smaller bag and put them away, but I thought, that, I thought that was pretty cool. And I ordered 200, and you can see there's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, so there's 20 on a board, so I was expecting 10 boards. I actually ended up getting 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So I actually got an extra 20 boards out of the deal. So I thought that was, uh, I guess it's, it's not uh, unheard of because PCB fabs, they'll uh, have extras made just in case one of them fails standards or whatever. And I was sitting here looking at my test PCBs and I thought I didn't plan this but something that something great that's going to happen out of this is I'm actually going to be able to break out from the hue card pins with one of these to ribbon cable and then back to ribbon cable and pogo pins with it with the with one of the other ones that's going to be perfect so obviously the ones down here will not have be like this it won't have a switch or power all that stuff going to it and then the one that I have pogo pins soldered to will and then I'll just have uh, 9 or 10 conductor ribbon cable between them. Hopefully that won't mess up anything. We have a test of you to see how well these fit. I reduced the diameter of the whole hole so that those pogo pins would stay in there fairly straight just to help me assemble and solder that. Yeah, that fits pretty well. I think I had to take it down to Remember 25 thou, 26. I was worried that the manufacturing process wouldn't give me an actual diameter that I requested, and I've had that happen before. And just some setting an eagle that was wrong. The other thing I'm worried about is if the head on these pogo pins is so broad that they'll be touching each other because these pins are really close together I think we'll be I think we'll be in good shape Well, they are really, really close. So close, I need to get the eye loop out just to make sure. Boy, there is <laughs> almost nothing between them. But I don't think they're touching. It's one of the things I'll have to check with the continuity meter. Try to get them situated somehow. That's not even the pin hole. That's a ribbon cable hole. Uh huh. Well, I was trying the wrong hole here. So, yeah, I may have requested just a little bit too tight of a hole. I left the ribbon cable holes the normal size, that row and that row, and then that row and then these pins, I requested a much smaller size, thinking that they might come back too big 
and I wouldn't wasn't gonna be able to close them up very well. But they're actually too small. I can't get that in there. However, I can drill them out, and I won't hurt nothing. So it looks like I'm gonna have to do that for a couple of these. That's all right. All right, so I'm looking at my drill chart, and it looks like an 026 is a 71. One thing I like about this holder is it's only going to give me one drill bit, access to one drill bit at a time. Can measure that, make sure it's actually a 26. It's measuring about 24 actually. Yeah. That diameter can't expect perfect accuracy as long as I can drill out one of these holes and yeah, wrong hole. I had to slug right into it. I'm gonna have to go a little bit bigger. It looks like because I didn't do nothing. And it's about 26 and a half. So can I get uh, like the next one is 70. That's a 0.28. But I could get a 0.7 millimeter. And that would be uh, 0.276. I don't think I've got that. Let's just try the 70. At worst, it'll just need a little more solder. Yeah, that one's looking like a, a little closer to 26. Yeah, that'll take some meat with it. A little bit anyway. I'm not sure if it'll do the job. Only way to find out. Ugh. Too tight still. Well, I guess we go to the next size of drill bit. So 69 is supposed to be a 292. That was a big jump. So that's closer to 030. Hmm. Yeah, I'll put that on the ribbon cable holes. And it'll take meat out of the ribbon cable holes and my pogo pins fitting those just fine. Bummer. Another set of bits here. These are all, I mean, these are really old. This is what you'll typically see for a 61 to 80 set on eBay. I just went for these because it was had a cool case, but apparently the quality is not that great on the actual bits. See, that one's a 27. That's ex probably exactly what I need. Wouldn't surprise me if 
A lot of those bits are the same bit. I don't think it's a brand name or nothing. Oh, it's broken. Well, I got it to go through anyway. There we go. Only slightly tighter than the ribbon hole, the ribbon cable holes. That makes me wonder if I've got one that's just a little bit tighter than that. So I've got a 71 that's supposed to be 26. Seems like we already tried 26. Yeah, that one's only measuring out about 24. Yeah, and it doesn't want to take any meet with it so and that one's not gonna work it may not even actually be see look at that that's just messed up <laughs> may not be in the right hole is what I'm saying it's in the hole for a 71 but it's actually measuring out that like 24 so it could be a 73 unfortunately I don't actually have any other bits so I guess I'm uh I don't have to do it with this one. Yeah, that's alright. As long as it can get uh, soldered together fairly well, then shouldn't be that big of a deal. I'm definitely going to automate this a little bit here. <laughs> Yeah, I tore one, and I guess that would have been 20, pin 23 of the Hue card. So I just got to make sure I check continuity there. I should have put traces on both sides connecting the pads. I got nice, uh, I think they're at least 10 thou traces maybe bigger connecting them I want to say we're getting there probably gonna have to drill these out maybe even bigger to get them onto the hue card pins that get bent up I'm not actually sure I don't remember how big those are exactly might have to drill those out as well but at least I have a plan now so I got all the pins kind of in there, kind of where I'm going to want them. I'm sitting here thinking maybe if I had a something square in between the two boards and then clamp them the right width. Something closer to right about there. What are we looking at? Yeah, somewhere in the range of half an inch. It might work. I'll have a look around here and see what I can find. Alright, so this old steel is half an inch. This was like a, a weird setup I had made for setting a roll of solder down on top of and it would spin on this bearing it worked okay but 
the newer holders are better. I also found that an Astrocade, a Bally Astrocade cart is also half inch, but I don't want to add heat to any plastic. Looks like it actually could go a little bit wider. I don't know, I'll give it a shot here. Well there it is. I'm trying to look down in there and get all of the heads lined up with the pads underneath. So I can solder them down. can't really figure a way to put any force on them. Just as long as they're lined up, I don't need them to be pushing down on the pads. And I believe they are actually all lined up just like that. So, let's try to solder them. I'm going to switch to my really tiny chisel tip here. I had a couple of bridges in there that I wasn't happy with, so I got them sucked out. And I think electrically we are okay. Man, them things are close. I would say they're actually. Yeah, a couple of them are touching right now but it's possible that once I put it back onto a board that they'll straighten out actually I'm gonna say yeah They're definitely too wide for this application. Could probably reduce them by 25%. But I didn't want to wait for pogo pins again. So it looks like as long as they get down into the holes, the holes will align them and they will separate enough to not be touching. I well, should try to retest that, I guess. And I've already got ribbon cables soldered up to one of the other PCBs here. I don't think it's soldered down to some motherboard. So all I really need to do is solder the ribbon cables to this board. Maybe one step closer. I'm sitting here looking at it. I've already done forgot a couple of the pins. I need to run the, the pins for the switch and for power. Duh. Down to each one. So there's four more pins I need to put on there. But nice to have done them all at the same time, right? <laughs> I don't know if well, that's how I was clamping it on that side, so maybe I couldn't have. Let me get through this off camera. Okay, now I think I'm getting there. Got the pin soldered on for power and switch. And I got the ribbon cables soldered back to the motherboard PCB. So I'm going to solder that down to something and then maybe we can start trying these. Well, I got really lucky getting the old one off there and getting the new one over the old pins. And then I have to run power over. And 
Now, I believe we are ready to test some stuff here. Let's try it. Oops, I forgot one thing. I need to solder a switch on to the test board. I specifically chose that giant footprint so it would match the legs on this switch somewhat. Looks like it actually does, so that's good. Go ahead and fill them in with solder since I'm not doing any through hole action with it. And I didn't label which one is Jap or US or whatever. Uh, figured I would just figure it out along the way. That is not straight at all. <laughs> it doesn't matter. As long as it operates, should do the job. Alright, so uh, I already tested it off camera and it didn't work. So I went back and checked all the continuities. Everything actually looked okay. So I went back and shortened my test leads. They were nine inches. Now they're four. And it's actually a little bit fiddly to line everything up. But it is working. Well, I should say I've tested a US game. I haven't actually put in a Japanese game yet. Yep. So now I guess I'm just down to going through and testing all 200 of these, both with US and Japanese games. Oh, I'm not looking forward to it. All right, so that was testing of just one board of 20 PCBs, both Japanese and US. Took a little bit of time, but really not that bad as far as time. Um, I was having problems with the switch pins, I think. And I realize now that I didn't need that fourth pin in the far corner for power because one of the switch pins is power. And they're all connected there, so I didn't need both of them. But I was having problems aligning the switch pins because they're on the on the far side of the board, and my fingers were covering that, and I couldn't see that. So when I was holding it, so if I had made the board bigger or put the switch somewhere else where I could have held it differently, maybe I could have watched that easier. But yeah, if it was if it was a bigger board and whatnot, I would have some kind of hole there with some kind of alignment pin, kind of like what Keftris does with high definition and whatnot. But yeah, that was pretty cool, right? So um, I'm gonna give you some close-ups and then we'll just end this video. I should have looked at this a little harder. Um, I just assumed every board had a chip placed. There's one without a chip placed. And there's one without a chip placed. And there's an almost entire board without a chip placed. So in the end I ended up with only five extra. I thought there was an entire board extra. Still extra, but kind of weird. I don't know, maybe if they caught this after the fact and threw another one together, I don't, I don't know. 
Well, this is why you test. I've got two here that didn't work. All right, there you go. So I consider that pretty well end of project here. Um, hope you enjoyed the testing and whatnot video. Uh, a little bit of review of PCB Ways. Somewhat happy with service. Um, I will have another video on another project that I use PCB Way for that I did have some problems with. Um, if you're interested in the Region Mods Switch Kit, then uh, simply find my website and go to the store, and it should be there for sale pretty soon.